let these air horns fly because not only uh, was the baby Caraway born on Saturday, not only did De'Aaron Fox announce that he's got a little one on the way, but our very own Will Z. This is how big of a fan De'Aaron Fox is of Will Z. De'Aaron was like, yo, Will Z having a baby. We got to tell everybody we're having a baby. Uh, Will Z announced <laughs> over the holiday weekend that him and his beautiful wife are are expecting a a new statistician on the way here in the coming months, man. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Very excited. Looking forward to it a lot. Baby's all over the place. James, you want to announce anything? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Actually, I, uh, I showed Shannon, the media relations director uh, of the Kings, uh, Kenny's text to me with, mm. with beautiful little baby pics. And uh, Mark Jones was standing right there. I, I, and she goes, oh, you're going to have are you going to have one? I'm like, uh, no. Like me and Mark Jones, we understand <laughs> we're at the other end. We, we see the end of the the light at the end of the tunnel where like, you know, empty nest. Empty nest is just around the corner. I like it. And Will, this is your this is your guys's first one. Yep. Okay. So getting ready for the exhaustion and and all that comes with it. But that's 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 great yeah. stuff, man. That's great stuff. Yeah. Congrats, Congratulations. Um, so guys. let's dive into this game tonight, uh, boy. And by the way, uh, credit to Will Z, who said the key to to beating the Celtics seemed to have been uh, hope that they get cold from three or hope that you get hot from three. Well, the Kings got really, really cold from three. I think a season low, 25% um, against against the Celtics on Friday. It was bad. Whatever it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was bad. Uh, the Celtics were not. And that game went pretty close to the way Will said it would go uh, if the Kings didn't hit their shots. Yeah, there's just certain teams where it was kind of like the Cavs game where pretty much the only time they had been beaten up to that point was when teams got hot from three and similar with the Celtics was you either have to get hot or the Celtics get cold and just a bummer that the Kings who were set up have the roster to kind of match anyone just couldn't seem to get the shots going. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting. You know, when you look at breaking down stats and games, um, what stands out to you with the Kings when it comes to what does it take for them to get the win or, or how are they beatable? Uh, because I mean, if, if the Cavs and the, the Celtics have these sort of, you know, number numerical benchmarks that, you know, you can see, what is it about the Kings that you, you look for? Um, I think they've been so it's interesting. I was looking at that earlier and nothing has super stood out to me, I think because of how, how well-rounded they are. Um, I should look into it a little bit more, but so far it seems like the Kings have either been on fire from three or scoring a ton in the paint. Uh, and they're usually able to rely on at least one of those things, but it's been the last few games where they've been cold from both spot. Um, which is just odd for them given their offensive firepower. How do you, so, so let's dive into tonight's matchup. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, a, a strong take by me, Will. The Suns are really good. Yeah. Uh, what was, was there a particular stat that stood out to you uh, as you were uh, preparing for this game and posting that preview by the numbers over on ESPN 1320.net? Yeah, yeah. Got two it. things. <laughs> two things. One is the home and road record for the Suns. Uh, Suns are eleven and one at home, but on the road they're just two and five. So mm -hmm. they're a much better home team than away team, which benefits the Kings, who are six and three at home. And then I didn't realize how good of a year Mikel Bridges is having. Uh, that really popped out at me. He's averaging career highs in points, rebounds, assists, three-point percentage, free throw percentage. He just, well, continuing his defense. Uh, so from the Suns' standpoint on how good they are, those are the kind of two things that stood out to me. When I'm watching Mikhail Bridges, I always get the feeling that he's way better and the, the Suns are holding him back. I mean, you get that Not that the Suns are completely you know, just putting a guy in the corner and, and not letting him do anything. But when they let him go off, 
he's really, really good. And I always wonder why he doesn't get more opportunities. He easily could be a 20 point per game score in this league. And uh, that just watching him play, like there are so many avenues where if he just added more shots, he would be perfectly capable. Yeah. I mean, his percentages are like through the roof. He's shooting 46.9% from three. So if you were to up that volume, even just a little, he'd pretty easily bump into the 20 point range. I'm sure. Two of the three teams with the highest point differential are the last two teams. The Kings have played the Celtics on Friday and the Suns tonight. Uh, And the Suns have been doing a lot of this without Chris Paul. Chris Paul is going to miss his, 10th game um, tonight. And I wonder, uh, well, how much of that might contribute to what Mikael Bridges is doing uh, so far this season? Yeah, let me look up real quick, see if there's been an increase in kind of Bridges production since Paul's been out. Sorry, I don't have that pulled up right away, but no, it's fine. It's Will Z I'm looking always... at it. It's kind of like <laughs> watching this is so this is how the so, so so this is this is Will's mind working. It's like the the hangover meme with all of the numbers just in symbols transferring around That's his right. head. So I'm gonna find I always joke that I'm like two clicks away from a stat. Uh, <laughs> pretty much always have something pulled up. So yeah, the last what 10 games? Um this will be the 10th tonight. That Chris yeah. because Chris Paul, I think, has already been ruled out. James, is that yeah, he's out. Yeah, Chris Paul's been ruled out yeah. for tonight's game. Yeah, his field goal attempts have definitely spiked. Um 20 the last nine games, 20, 13, 14, 11, 12, 11, 17, 17, 10. Uh, mm-hmm. before that, his season high was 13. Um, and he'd only gone over 10 in about half the games. So he's just gotten more. James, like you were saying, more volume with Chris Paul being out that and they are two, three, four, five, six, and three in those nine. Mm-hmm. So they're not, I'm sure they miss Chris Paul, but they have the depth and the talent to kind of make up for it. Yeah, Cameron Payne is uh is playing out of his mind. And it's kind of like that that moment where he he's kind of everything's come together, right? Uh, he hasn't had a foot injury, which he had so many other times during his career. He's a guy that the Kings were interested in multiple times years and years ago, but never could get straight with his injuries. Um, what are you seeing like his explosion, especially with Paul out? He's been the guy who's carrying the the most of the load at the point guard position. Um, and, and, you know, I guess we should bring up too, like this team is not as dynamic without Cam Johnson. Like uh, it's a very, very high scoring team. They're number two the number three in the league in, in offensive rating and number four in the league in defensive rating, but they're also a really slow team. They're 29th in pace, which is not something you usually see a high powered offense that is really slow in pace. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the thing that stood out to me about that is they don't turn it over very much. Um, so even though they're not very quick, they take advantage of all their possessions so uh, they turn it over 13.2 times a game, which is 26th in the NBA. Um, and I mean, we saw at the last few games with the Kings where they're just not getting as many shots with their turnovers. And it's something that the Suns do a good job of and take care of the ball and get the shots up. Um, so even though they may not be running as fast, they still get generally more looks than their opponent. So I ask you this, Will. KZ Akpala time? I like it. I I'm a defense first guy. Like I that's why I love Davion so much. I think that's my type is uh <laughs> great defenders. <laughs> so I like it. If he can chip in like six to ten points a game with the type of defense he can provide, I just the length that he has is something that Davion doesn't possess just naturally. And the idea of Davion and Akpala out there together, just harassing opponents at the same time is it's intriguing. I don't know if the offense, it'll be interesting to see if the offense can carry that with both of them out there. But I mean, what a dynamic duo on defense. Those two would be great stuff. Will. we appreciate you as always, my man. And again, congrats on the, uh, on the new arrival. You can check out Will Z's work over there on 
uh, ESPN1320.net. We appreciate you, Will. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.